we've got Excel starting now. Should be, I guess, this next two weeks. This week, we've got class both days, Monday and Wednesday. Thursday and Friday is student holidays, just as a reminder to you. That's student holidays, not school holidays. But we got a, the faculty's all got to go sit in meetings in Calhoun all day, Thursday and Friday. So while y'all have the days off, we still got to work. Um, next week, I will not be here, so we won't have class on Monday or Wednesday next week. Still got your assignments to do. <clears throat> I'll still be online in the evening, um, but it may be later in the evening because I've got two conferences I'm going to in Eastern North Carolina next week. They're right by each other. They're like 30 miles apart or something. Um, 30 or 40 miles apart somewhere in there. So Monday I'm in a Cisco conference all day and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday I'm in a general computer conference, instructors conference there all day for those three days and I haven't looked at the schedule out there to see what all they got planned. I know we got meetings all day long which is actually training things um, and I, I say I haven't looked at the schedule, but I assume that on Tuesday or Wednesday evening they've got a supper thing for us, but I don't know that. Last year they did, um, but I haven't gone through. And I'm not even sure if they've actually published a complete schedule on it. Because actually on Friday they wrote me, because I'm speaking at it, and they wrote and asked me if I would switch the time I'm speaking one day from middle of the day to first thing at 9 o'clock, I think on either Tuesday or Wednesday. For, it may have been Thursday, but I'm thinking it may have been Tuesday. But in any event, that they've changed, they were changing me from to an earlier slot, which they call it a prime time slot. Um, because I've got two different times I'm speaking at it. And then the rest of the time that I'll go into other seminars and be learning other things. Um, and I haven't looked at the whole thing, figuring out where I'm going to be when. As I say, I, the only schedule I remember seeing so far from them, but they may have it out on their website, and I just haven't gone out and looked there. That I haven't gone through and looked to see exactly where, and I probably will decide when I get there anyway on what things I want to go into. And that I'm going to be pushing there about we're going to do the same conference, same type conference in Georgia next year that I'm in charge of, which will be the first time we'll do it in Georgia. So all the vendors that are there, I'm going to be talking to them about <coughs> come to Georgia next March. So that'll keep me busy for the week. And then Friday will be a travel day for me again. As I say, it's in east, northeastern North Carolina, so it's a distance from here to do the drive. So we are on Excel. <coughs> but like I say, in the evening when I get back to the motel, I'll get online each day and answer y'all's questions and stuff and may get some grading or whatever done too. <coughs> and if y'all thought I had a full schedule, I've got one more class now. Because <coughs> they handed me another class for the B session that I've now got starting this morning. So I've got a intro computers which is the terminology course, the CIST 1001 class, starting today. <clears throat> and I spent Saturday working on setting, getting part of it set up, and I gotta get the rest of it set up. Because I came to the conclusion that the way they had it set up when 
some other faculty members gave it to me and said it's all set you just gotta go in and go well first thing was I definitely had to go and change set dates on it and then I decided I really didn't like what they had there so I'm modifying stuff so that's what I've been doing and I've got to get some other things done all right Excel <coughs> In some ways, some of the stuff they are going to teach you in here is not going to be as hard as it was for you for um, Word because a lot of things will work the same for you. So you're not going to have big differences on some things. So when it gets to formatting the worksheet, but that is going to be familiar to you that you've already done. <clears throat> um, so we're working with spreadsheets now instead of documents. Um, probably out of the things you're doing in the class in here, this is the second most used, probably third most useful one. The Windows Internet stuff will be the most useful <coughs> to you. Um, hopefully y'all all learned some stuff in there. Word probably the second most useful <coughs> and now Excel. Okay. Some of you may not ever use Excel after you finish the class. <coughs> I will give you that. Um, but most of you are going to use it in some way because you can do a number of different things with a spreadsheet. So not just from a business viewpoint, but from individual. So if we go into Excel, <clears throat> it's going to work similar to starting it up just like we did in Word. But if we're creating a new spreadsheet, there it's going to appear right there where it was blank document when we were in Word. So if we go to there, that's going to open up the spreadsheet for us. <clears throat> And the spreadsheet's just a whole bunch of blocks out there. So it's just grid paper put onto the computer is what it is. Okay? And that we've got rows on it, which are all numbered, which go to something like 8,096. Okay? And then we've got a whole bunch of columns that go way on out there into double letters, etc. out there. Okay? And I have actually developed a spreadsheet that went into the Yon Z and goes on down into a bunch of rows down there. So that you can do a lot of things on that. Um, so you're going to, any cell out here is going to be addressed by which row it's in and which column it's in. So that's going to be the important part of that. And then you're going <coughs> to be able to do all kinds of calculations out there, etc., with the spreadsheet. And that you can do all kinds of things in a spreadsheet. Okay? Now, you can do some of that back to Word if you want it, but it doesn't work real well on it. Um, my suggestion is when it's spreadsheet type stuff, do it in a spreadsheet. Um, so you can sit there and do all types of calculations and such. Spreadsheets that I have developed out there. Um, so right now it's tax time. I will have a spreadsheet that I'm started on, I think already, that I go through and put in all of the different areas of my deductions for the year of where all I gave money to that's deductible. I'll put in columns and then I put all the amounts down there and then I let it calculate what the total for each one of them is. And then all I got to do is take these totals and put them into the tax software. Um, the BB gun match that I work with. For a number of years, they used a spreadsheet that I developed that went through and we typed the score in for the individual shooter and it would put it on over into the team results and it would also put them in individual results of whatever position it was just from having typed it for the individual student, it's not student, but the individual shooter. Let me school right now. 
Uh, but they had to take a test also. Um, and that it would automatically do that and sort on the positions and the teams and that we knew who got medals as far as in the prone position or the standing position, et cetera, that it automatically did it from it of just entering the number in one place and calculated it all out and we knew which were the top teams. And actually I had every team ranked. And prior to me doing it on the spreadsheet, they were sitting there doing by hand and nobody knew anything beyond if they were a top 10 team at the match because actually at their award ceremony they marched the top 10 teams in in reverse order recognizing them and if you were in position 11 through 50 you had no idea where you fell <clears throat> and likewise the individual shooters they only knew if they were the top three in their position but they didn't the information wasn't there for anything below that because all they went through looking was to see what the highest score was that person and hunting on down. After I did that, that I then created web pages from it and kids could find out exact, exactly how they did in it besides knowing their shooting score. So I gave all kinds of stuff and it was automatically there that I had it doing all of that. You've got plenty of business type applications running out there that calculating taxes and payroll and everything else done in a spreadsheet. So there's all kinds of things. My dissertation was actually done on a spreadsheet and had lots of calculations to it comparing teacher salaries from all over the state of Georgia to where I did stuff on it. It was actually back in 88 <clears throat> and 89 when I did that, it took six hours to run the spreadsheet. The same spreadsheet run today on the machines today takes less than a minute. <clears throat> but it still takes about 30 to 45 seconds to run the program. So it's a complex program out there, but as we've gotten faster on machines. Um, it took a lot of work to get that one done. It took a huge amount of work to get all the bugs out of it. Because I, I would go to run it, it might run for three hours and then found a place that made it. There was a mistake and it would crash and I'd have to see where it crashed it, fix that error, start it all over again and it'd be three hours before I knew where the next mistake was. Um, with the speed of the machines we've got now, it would be a whole lot easier. But then my professors all said about them having done the same study in Florida by hand, that they had spent something like thousands and thousands of hours. Um, I really think it was they had calculated in Georgia it was going to take them 10,000 hours to do it by hand. Um, and that when I did it on the computer and got it done where it worked that fast that they were impressed. In turn, two other people, one that I knew and somebody else that I didn't know did used my program to do the similar study in South Carolina and in Indiana from it, um, just modifying according to those states. They still had to do a good bit of work on the program. So, um, opening the spreadsheet is going to be the same as you did in Word. Saving it is going to be the same as you did in Word also. That if we just go up there to file and there's the save and save as identically the same as what you saw before. Um, and save <clears throat> and working the same way. So this first time, <coughs> I don't know where this stuff got on my throat right now, but it has. That those are going to work the same way as we did before. Um, I'm just going to tell it to save documents. And you're going to have similar set of choices as you had in Word, except it says Excel now in spreadsheets. Um, Excel S is the extension it's using for Word 2007 and beyond. It's actually using Excel SX, just like we saw in Word. It was DOCX. Well, in 97. 2003 is XLS and notice we can save back to that version just like we could in Word. 
So those are all there. We can put it into a web page. Uh, the same as what I told you about in Word, it's going to generate all kinds of garbage out there. But like when I'm at the BB gun match, 4th of July weekend, and I get the stuff and it's in Excel format and they're using somebody else's spreadsheet now, but still the same thing. Um, actually, it's interactive out there. Um, that um, I'll generate a web page from Excel for right then, that day, on the final day of it. <coughs> get the data all out there and then I go back over the next few weeks and clean it up and rewrite the pages, basically. <coughs> Um, so you can save it in a whole bunch of other type of formats. Out there, um, comma separated values, the CSV will be one that you will see pop up quite regularly. And that's where it's being saving the data out there purely cell by cell separated by commas on it. And it will go into any spreadsheet program from a CSV file, but it doesn't have formatting with it. It's just got, gets the data in there for you. Um, so that's used a lot of times and you'll see that one mentioned sometimes. I'm not sure what the difference between Macintosh and MS-DOS CSV files are. This should be the same thing. And that's the first time I remember seeing them having two different CSV files. Because if you had asked me before right now, I would tell you that it's the same CSV file for everything. Because it's basically a text file. But I don't know where they've come up with that there's two different things there. So you could choose whichever one by default it is going to save to the XLSX one and remember it's hiding extensions on us because that's the default they've got set on the machine where I like extensions showing and so it's calling it a book. You've got um, so you've got that, um, it's a workbook, and that we're going to have sheets within the workbook. So I'm going to close that and go back to, so that this is a single sheet in here with all of this. You can have multiple sheets down here so we can have tabs within the spreadsheet, okay? And actually, on some of those I just mentioned to you, I had various sheets across here, and you can reference data from sheet to sheet, which makes it really powerful, useful on it. All right. To put the data in, we're just going to type the numbers right in there wherever we want them. Um, and we can put headings across the top on it, so that's what you'll usually have. So. I'm going to call this one hours and rate and pay. They don't have to use yeah, they do. Okay. And then I can put in here, this is Jim. He worked 40 hours this week. How much y'all want to pay him an hour? Two dollars. Two dollars? The rest of y'all don't work for him. Just work for me. I'll make millions. I'll give All right. Raise every 30 years or so. Joan worked 35 hours. Abby, how much are we going to pay her? Ten dollars? Okay. So she'll get ten dollars an hour. Okay, so we don't have to worry about sex discrimination on pay here this time. Because we don't have the men being out paid to the women. I think that is discrimination. Huh? I think that is discrimination. Slightly. But we're not going to get normal complaints on it. Now, so that's all you got to do to put in your data. So everybody follow on that? Um, notice by default it's going to left justify words and the numbers are going to be right justified. Okay? And we're going to be able to format them to make the numbers look different in just a minute. 
Now, if you want it to get the sum of all the hours of everybody that worked this week, we only got two of them there. That's easy enough that we can add that up and come up with 75, right? But if we had 100 people there, you can use the sum function to do it. Go to the cell where you want to put the sum into. And then if you come up here to where it says auto sum, and it's got this strange looking, looks like an E, but it's not. That's actually the Greek symbol for summing. Um, but if we click it, it's going to automatically decide, looking at what's around that cell, what should it be adding up. It's either going to add up stuff that's above it or stuff that's to the left of it. Now, you can actually add up stuff to the right or a bunch of stuff down below. Or if you had numbers above and to the side, it might not choose the direction you want, but you can in turn change the area that it's chosen. So, but it's going to go ahead and do automatic for us. So inside here it says equal sum, and that's what it's actually typed up here, where it shows us the actual equation. Equal sum, parentheses, and then it tells us the range of cells, the beginning cell and the ending cell that we want added together. Are we see that? So it says V2 colon V3. The colon says from here to here, okay? You could do a different area on it. So you could go up there and actually change the cell addresses on it, or if you had have wanted it to be summing stuff to the other side, you can just go and click and choose the area where you want it to go onto and that you'll just click into the spot you want. So if that wasn't really what we wanted summed, you could change it. But most of the time, auto sum will actually choose the right area. And if there'd been 100 names, different people up there, it would have chosen the numbers all the way up to the start of the numbers. And that it will do it quickly for you. So then we will hit enter if that's like we want. And notice it gave us the answer. Well, Jim actually worked 42 hours this week. So if we change that number, oh, I don't have numerical on. That's what my problem is. It's going, why did it not type the number for me and jumped around sales? Remember, make sure you got numlock on. Now numlock's going to be more important to you because you may well want to use the number keypad in Excel because you're going to be entering lots of number type things. Type in the 42 and notice what it did with the answer as far as the total. It changed it automatically right there for us. So formulas will work real, the, that one will work real nicely for us. So the sum function they have shown you right here. Um, and there are some other functions you can do too, but that's a big one for you. Um, see what they do on formatting. Okay, font style and size and color, which is the same type of things you did in Word, same things work here. <clears throat> and you can select the area just like you could select just part of it on the other. If you want it to apply to the whole spreadsheet, you can click the little square up here in the <clears throat> corner and it will actually choose the whole spreadsheet for us. And so everything you do applies to the whole thing. Or you can just choose certain areas. So if we want it to just set hours, rate, and pay into a red font, which is the default one right there, and y'all know how to use to pull down and change to a different color. Notice it changed nicely right there. If we wanted all of those bolded, we can bold them on the red, it can't tell much about the bolding. So maybe the names of them will bold. And that shows a little better on bolding. You can change the font on the text around there, just like you could do in Word. All of that is exactly the same as you had before. Notice subscripting, etc. is there. Highlighting will still work for us. So if we want it to highlight that total, that we can use the highlighter. Actually, that's the fill color. There's the highlighters on here too, but 
don't see it in any event, but I'm going to go ahead and hit the fill color. And so I've got the fill color put in on the thing. Um, so all of those are available to you just like before. Um, and then you can save at any point on it. Um, Don't forget to do that search and email assignment, which I believe is due today, isn't it? I know I've gotten from two of you, I've gotten the emails, but I haven't heard from the rest of y'all, so make sure you get that one done. Let's see. You can also change the width of your columns and the rows will work the same way that if we go out to the edge on the column or the row onto the little line there, notice our little marker changes to a two-headed arrow. If you click and drag, you can widen the column or shrink it. Likewise, rows will work the same way that you can make them bigger. So you can adjust those as you need to adjust them from the default size and to make it look like you want it to look. Um, let's see what they've got for modifying the appearance of the workbook. <clears throat> Okay, that's going into views. That's what they want to do there. Let's see if there's anything else they get there. So if we go back to Excel, if we go to view, there are several different views you can do on this. Normal is where you're typing your stuff in out there. Page break preview shows you how it breaks into various pages. So if I go to page break view, it would actually show where the pages are and how it's going to print out for you on the paper. Um, with page breaks, but not on the printing on the paper, page layout will actually show it to you like it's going to appear on the piece of paper for you. Okay. Um, and we can still type right in here because it's just a view difference. So if we want it to change Joan, she really worked 50 hours this week for us, that we can still do that in that view, okay? Although you're going to normally do it be in normal view. Um, like there, when you're going to the page layout one, you may well not want the grids actually showing there and that you can turn off the grid lines and now it looks more like what you're used to looking what it should look like because you normally aren't going to print it with grid lines all over the whole time um, and then you've got a header section on here just like you did in um, Word so there's a header section up there above that's not down in the actual spreadsheet where you can put stuff also. So you can actually put things up there in the header or you can be down the body. So you again still got a header and a body. Um, And you can actually turn off the grid lines when you're in normal mode also. But when you go to print, the grid lines aren't going to be there unless you tell it to be there. So if we go to print, 
we'll do file and print and then it's the normal things that you see right there you can set it in both portrait or landscape <clears throat> and this is where I use landscape a lot more than like in Word that I will put spreadsheets into landscape to get them all to fit onto one page because they're wider than a page worth in portrait so you can set that on there um, here it says to print the active sheets um, if you've got a pay uh, Excel sheet that has multiple sheets to it <clears throat> print entire workbooks probably what you want <clears throat> unless you want to just print a specific sheet on but worksheets is the individual pages workbook is all of the different pages so quite often I'll use the print entire book <clears throat> um, and then it should tell us up there where it's going to print it to and I have no idea in the world where a smart notebook document writer is <clears throat> Oh, that's with to the smart board because we're using all the smart board. But if I actually wanted to print it to the printer, it sounds like that's going to go to some other printer somewhere. I'm going to stick my name in this thing before I do that so I can find out where in the world it prints it. Because I don't think it's going to print it, the printer in this room. If somebody finds it, they'll see my name down on it and bring it to me and I can find out where did it print it. It may even print in my office because four other people print in my office. And you can print it to PDF if you notice also. So you can make a PDF file to go and distribute out to people. So I'm going to print and it has sent it off to somewhere. All right, questions on all of that. So there's not much in unit one. Does everybody understand what a spreadsheet is? Because sometimes that's one on it. Um, <clears throat> and the people that probably need the lecture more are the ones not here today. Are the ones that don't have the computer experience as much are the ones out today. I don't know where they all are. And the ones of you that know a little more on computers are the ones here. Um, so, <coughs> let's glance at two. Since we're not going to have class next week, let's go ahead and see if we can cover two right now. All right. So it gets into formulas. and several other things right here. So let's look at a formula on here. So we'll go back to our spreadsheet. And let's calculate the pay. To do that, we'll do a formula. Because how do you calculate pay? What are we going to do to figure out how much we're going to pay Jim? <coughs> I'm going to multiply the hours times the rate, right? So to do that, you're going to go to the cell where you want to calculate it, and then go up to the top, and then you can type in there how to do the pay. And we want to take the 
hours times the rate. Now, where is Jim's hours? What cell? B what? You got the column. We're gonna have the row two. B two. B two. So we're gonna put an equal sign to tell it that we're doing the calculation. Now I'm gonna put B two. <clears throat> and then I want to tell it times. What symbol am I gonna use for times? Star. Star. X is not gonna work. And you use a star. <coughs> Division will be the slash like you're used to. Addition will be the plus sign like you're used to. Subtraction will be the minus sign like you're used to. Let's just be aware on multiplication it's a star, not an X. It also can't be an implied one either like you were used to in math along the way where you could just say B parentheses some other letter or whatever and you implied it together. Okay? So I'll put a star, and then where's the rate at? It's in C2, correct? And then if I hit e hit enter, I don't know where I got equal from on that, it gives me the answer there. Okay? Now, I don't have to type that in every cell. I can now copy that one by going to the cell and come down here to the little dot in the bottom right corner. There's a little dot there. If I click on it, notice it changes to just a plain plus sign, and drag down, it will copy that formula on down. And if we look in this cell, now we see the formula there is B3 times C3. Everybody see that? So it changes going downward it will increase the row numbers by a number for each one it copies on down. If we copied it across, oh, and this little dotted line is actually paging for us. It tells us where it would page up. Um, you're going, why is there a dotted line on the screen on some columns, but there's not on others? If we went across, it will change the letters to the next letter and it will automatically do those for you. So everybody follow on that part? So they'll sit there and do all of that for you. If you don't want it to change a cell that's in there, you're gonna put dollar signs around it. So we're gonna give everybody a bonus of $100, okay? So I'm putting it down here Huh? Jim will be happy. What won't be happy? Hmm? What won't be happy? Jim will be happy. Oh, Jim will be happy. Yeah. Joan will be too. Joan will like her five hundred her extra hundred dollars. Yeah, but that's more than doubling his. So if I go back up to Jim's cell, I can add in there a plus and tell it the cell where it is. And the bonus is down there in B8. So I can put B8 and hit enter. And it did that nicely. Now I can copy that down again so that Joan's getting the same calculation. And notice what happened. Joan didn't get any more money. But it says up there to add something to it, but it says B9. Well, there's nothing in B9, so that didn't work. We want the B8 to stay B8 in all of the other people's cells. Does everybody follow on that? So if we come up here and change this to put in dollar signs before the B and the 8, and actually all I have to do is put it in the for the eight in this case because it's this number I don't want changing. But I'll make it an absolute cell which says don't change this one when it's copied. So I'll hit enter. Now I'll go and copy down again and click and Joan got her hundred dollars. 
So Abby Jones making her money like she should. Okay, everybody see how that worked on that? And see, the others are relative. They change in relation to where they are when you copy them. But if you put dollar signs by it, it says don't change this letter or don't change this number or that you put dollar sign before both of them. And it says don't change either one of them when they're copied. So absolute can work nicely for you at times. It's not something you use a huge amount of, but it can be something you use sometimes. So, and that's a good example of it where we put down there because maybe that's the bonus we pay. This would, that occasionally we give them a bonus amount and so we can put a cell out there that says here's the bonus amount and we just pop in there the bonus amount that week that we're paying out and everybody gets it. Um, so that's the absolute and the relative and the mixed is what I just showed you on that. Relative is what it does by default. Everything changes as you copy it. Absolute says that we've put dollar sign both before both that row and the column so that it does not change at all. And then the mixed is where I said that you could tell it only change the letter or only change the number when it's copied. Um, but most of the time that you do it, it's either going to be absolute or relative. That um, you're not going to have mixed very often. And you can actually press, there's an F key that will actually let you do that also when you're sitting on it. And I don't remember which F key it is that you can do with that. Um, you can also put the date into here. Um, So you can put your date and right moment I can't think what the date function is. Okay, you can do average also. Um, just works just like we did with sum. Sum put the word sum in front of it and put the range of it. You could put the word average and then put a range of sales and it'll give you the average of those sales. So we could put all everybody's scores in the class in there and then figure out what the average grade y'all made on the test by using average and give the range of where all your test scores were. That's a good powerful one. Count will do the same thing if you wanted it to count the number of cells that have got stuff in them. It will count them for you. Um, and there's some different ones they show you on that. Um, count counts the cells that have values in them. Count A are the ones that have any data in them. Um, count blank will actually let you count which cells in that range don't have anything in it. I've never used count blank. And count if and count s. If s um, gets into some criteria on there and I really haven't ever used those either. Um, Max is another one that's out there that will let you go out and see what's the biggest number and it'll return and tell you what was the biggest number in the range you entered. Um, min is also there and then there's the today and now functions which is what I was looking for. So if I wanted to put the day's date in it up here in the corner I'd go to the cell where I want to do it and then I'd put today and should be a parentheses, parentheses. And I did that wrong, obviously. Oh, I forgot the equal sign in front of it because it's a function. So if I come back up here, and that equal sign to start it up is important. Now if I hit enter, notice it gives me today's date. And that will change every time you bring it up with the current date on it. Y'all follow on that? That gives me the date. If instead I use now instead of today, it will give us more information than just the day. So if I do now, and if I expand the cell here, Actually, it gives me the date only there. Okay. 
And then there's a time function. It should be a time function. I know there's a time function, but it should be time. And notice it's going to give me back hour, minute, second. Except for I've got to give it the time on that. Um, instead of now. So time and now are going to give you the same thing there. Um, And then you can actually put dates inside there if you want it, and that you can work with that. All right. Let's see what else there was right here. Oops, didn't mean to click that one. That's okay. Um, you got a bunch of math functions you can do out there also. Um, so there's a number of other functions that work the same as what I just said on it. So if I told you about max and min and average and count. There's others that you can do statistical functions out there if you want the standard deviation for a certain area. That's above and beyond y'all in here, I know, but if you want it any, there is a long list of type calculations you can get it to automatically for you, okay? so that it will sit there and do lots of numerical works for you in that with the math and the trig functions. So, and we won't touch on the trig fun functions on that. Because just for most of you getting through, getting to through algebra is gonna be enough problem if you're in the degree, if y'all are normal students, um, which let's get into trig. Um, although some of you may have already taken trig in high school and still going to have an aggravation trying to get through algebra again in college. Um, because of all the courses we've got at the college, probably the one that gives more students more problems is the algebra course. And that I know a number of students that never graduate because of the algebra course. I've got friends from high school of mine that when I see them that comment they never finished college, they got everything done except their algebra course. Hmm? That's encouraging. Because they just could not get through it. And you think about it with y'all's friends that you know people fitting into that category too. And that's the reason some end up in diploma instead of associate degree here at school is it's a lower level math for you. And some just get technical certificates from here because they don't have to have the math in there. But Excel will do a lot of that stuff for you. So and make a big difference for you on that. All right, any questions on Excel? Because we've gone through number one and number two. I say Usually, once you get through Word, 
usually Excel goes easier for you. If we started with Excel first, it would have hit a lot of people a lot harder. But you already know how to basically work in there now, where you figured that out in Word, and Word was easier on. But, um, there's, but you're now working with numbers. Now, the fact you're working with numbers scares a lot of people off too, back to that math part. Okay. Don't get too hung up too far on that. Just be aware it will do lots of stuff for you. Okay. So you can get it to do <coughs> lots more. So there's a lot more stuff you can do with that. So then that basically covers that. And is there only two or three projects in here? Does she have that? Okay, so there's a third project, but let's let's wait till Wednesday then. to go over project three, because actually project three is not due till the 20th. So we'll actually be back a week in there anyway. Okay. Um, so we've covered this week and next week already. Now, assuming that the other people show up on Wednesday, we'll probably need to go back and look at some of this and then we look a little further on some too. The other one is I'll try to, and Elijah, since I can depend on you, will you send me an email tomorrow and tell me to bring, to bring my spreadsheets and I will bring a copy of the BB gun spreadsheet and maybe my dissertation spreadsheet, although that was written in Lotus 1, 2, 3, but bring you a couple of big spreadsheets to show you a big spreadsheet on it, okay? The rest of y'all do the same thing, but I just one that read me last time. So hey, can you remember it this time? Yeah. You'll try. <laughs> remember, because I'm not going to remember this time. Okay. So y'all will send me a note, and when I get home this afternoon, I'll try to remember right then, because I just need to copy it on my thumb drive. I found the end of the spreadsheet going right. It's on XFD. It's what? XFD is the end of the spreadsheet on the side. I'm trying to find the number. Going down. At one time it was 8,096, and I'm not sure if it's a bigger number now or not. Well, I just hit 200,000. So okay. It's a bigger number now. That's still going. But like I say, I have gone into double letters on a few things and then if I'll bring that BB one for you that I'll show you where and I'll show you how you can link worksheets together into that workbook because I've got it with stuff on different pages linking back and forth. I just passed a quarter million. Who even needs to shoot that rate? Think about an accounting firm doing stuff on this or large companies doing stuff on it. You could do your inventory for your com company on it. A small business, not going to use a ton of rows, but they could have everything listed in there. Um, but think about a larger company or whatever. Is it trying to rain out there or what? It looked like the pavement's gotten black out there, and that's what I thought, because it's supposed to rain, I think, every day but Wednesday when it's supposed to warm up. Yeah, I think so. Good. Because it's supposed to go back up to 70 on Wednesday, but then the rest of the week is supposed to be only up to 60 or less each day. The weather's going to be crazy. It's March, so temperatures will go up and down all month. We're hitting and records. if y'all think, huh? We're hitting records. But we've turned back around and we're back where we should be right now. Okay? Um, but that's normal too of that you get some days always that are warmer in there. Um, so it bounces. And March is chronically up and down. If you think about it, March is. Besides the fact that they say about for winds where it really is because as you get the fronts and starting to move towards warmer that will get the tornadoes and everything bouncing through all over the country. Um, 
so we got no telling on weather on it that conference I'm going to next week two years ago when I went to it in Raleigh North Carolina I drove through an ice storm in North Carolina getting there if I hadn't had a room reserved that was going to that, that later that night by the time I got up that direction that I couldn't cancel out on without losing the money on I would have stopped part way there and spent the night I got there and there was ice this thick hanging off my car including the antenna on my car now I kept seeing cars everywhere except for on the road in front of me um, and I say that was two years ago right now because they've had this conference usually at the same time each year. They just passed a half a million. Hmm? They just passed a half a million. Did it? So, and when it saves it, it's going to save just what it needs to. It's really saving the data in there. So, if you've got the little tiny spreadsheet like we saved up here, it doesn't take hardly any space on there. But if we go and use the half million rows like he's wandered down to, and put stuff all over the place it's going to save a whole lot bigger. So we'll just see how weather does <coughs> on it and again if you're not on the alert system get on it in terms of for school to know if we're not going to have school or something else because like I say it could change it could change drastic for several reasons. We could get a snowstorm still, because if y'all think back, y'all are aware of when we've gotten snow in March before. Um, and we could have some bad weather of other types around. We'd get a blizzard with four feet of snow and then melt the next day and go to 100 degrees. So, um, and that I was, I've been at other stuff at this time of the year. And, got into the motel, got up in the morning and discovered that there were several inches of snow outside the motel when I got up and got to get to the place. All right, then I will see you on Wednesday.